Well, greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Jamie's Journeys. And uh, today we're coming to you from West Africa in the country of Ghana. We are starting from the port city of Takaradi. And uh, this part of the country of Ghana was first said to be inhabited about the 12th century uh, by the indigenous people uh, or original Ghanaians who came down from the north country after the fall of the Ghana Empire, which was said to be a prosperous empire at the time. The first visitors from Europe came in 1471, and that's when the Portuguese traveled down the coast, hitting many countries along the way, all the way down to South Africa. But they stopped here, in particular, in search of gold, and gold they did find. Later, they also found that there were other goods that were tradable here, that being ivory, palm oil, and pepper. Well, following that, a whole slew of other countries came to this area because there was another trade that was developing, and it was an unfortunate trade, and that being the slave trade, which is very popular al along this coast, which was known as the Gold Coast, but is also part of what's known as the Slave Coast. But what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take you uh, down the coast to another town called Elmina, and here is where uh, the Portuguese originally settled and created some uh, wonderful castles and fortresses, which are now UNESCO heritage sites. We're gonna visit uh, one of them, tell you a little bit about the history, and then see where our travels take us from there. So thanks for joining me and coming along on another Jamie's Journey. Well, we've uh, traveled down the coast to uh, about an hour and a half to the city of Elmina, right along the sea. And uh, this is an important place, and I'll tell you why. You know, slavery and the, the trade of slavery uh, lasted for about 250 years, from the 1500s to the 1800s. Now, it started from a European standpoint uh, with the Portuguese, and then uh, the Danes and the Dutch got involved, also the Germans in the transporting of slaves from along this coast. Uh, we're now on the Gold Coast, often referred to as the Slave Coast, uh, from here, either to Europe or across the ocean to the Americas. Now, right behind me, in this little bay, is the bay where many, many of the slaves had, were transferred from a, a fortress called St. George that we're gonna visit in a moment to the boats and then they said uh, farewell to Ghana. In the 250 year history that slavery existed, it's estimated that about 15 million, that's 15 million men, women, and children were taken from this coast and transported overseas. We're gonna take you into the fort of St. George, which was uh, built by the Portuguese. 
and uh, we'll show you a little bit of what's on inside and we'll teach you some of the tragic history of what took place there. inside a beautiful courtyard here in the castle and I am now uh, going to introduce you to uh, the top guy here and this is Francis. Francis, oh, nice to be with you. Nice to be here as well. Yeah. Welcome to St. George's Castle. And I think they call you the top guy because you've got a great smile. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> First off, uh, you live in the town here? Oh yeah, I'm re I'm, I'm, I've really stayed here for all my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I schooled here. And I also had my education in the university just around this place. Mm -hmm. And now I'm working here as a guide. Yeah. yeah. What do you like best about the city you live in? Uh, oh, I like the way we are very sociable. Mm -hmm. You know, Elmina people over here, we are very sociable, we are very friendly. We like visitors a lot. Yeah. Uh, especially when we see you, White, mm -hmm. the kids around here mm -hmm. actually try to come closer to you just to have a word yeah. with you. Yeah. That's what I like about this community. We are very friendly. Well, that's very nice. I've sensed that already. Okay. Well, this uh, castle that we're in uh, played a very important role in your history. And why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, okay, okay. Um, this is St. George's Castle, mm -hmm. as I said, our Elmina Castle. It was built by the Portuguese in the year 1482. But Portuguese came here in the year 1471. And they came with the intention of trading with the locals over here. Mm -hmm. And when they were coming initially, in the year 1471, they came along with some of the European commodities such as spiritual liquor, tobacco, iron, wine, later guns, and gunpowder. By the way, exchanging these commodities for African gold, ivory, spices, beads, and others. But later, as they went on with the trading, they discovered that there was abundance of gold in the soil over here. Mm -hmm. Because of that, they named this place Al Mina, meaning the mines in their own language. But the locals over here were not then conversant with the Portuguese language. So they corrupted Al Mina into today's Almina. Okay. So the name Almina was given by the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. We also have another contemporary name, Edna. Edna was also a Portuguese word. The original word was idea. And idea simply means village. So anytime they said they were coming to idea, it gave an impression that these people were coming to village. Idea was also corrupted to today's Edna. Mm -hmm. So either Almina or Edna, they were all corrupted names given by Portuguese. So now you could ask the question is that, if that's the case, where is the original name of this community before arrivals mm -hmm. of the Portuguese? Our original name was Anomansa in our local language, meaning inexhaustible water. Mm -hmm. Or water no does no very good. Or water that get very difficult before it dries up. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of the original name. Mm -hmm. Now in 1482, Moses for forgot motivated the then king of Portugal to send 600 people down here to build a place where they could lodge and also keep their commodities. Mm -hmm. Those people were made up of artisans, carpenters, from best painters and a whole lot. But their leader was called Don Diago de Azambuja. When he led the delegation to this place, they continued the journey to the then king of Elmina, called Nana Kwam and Ansa the Sist. They did a negotiation with the man, and then after, this portion of land where the castle standing was given to them to build a castle. Mm -hmm. After completion, they preferred naming the castle after their patron who sent them. The patron who sent them was called St. George, so that explains the reason why the castle is now called St. George's Castle. Mm -hmm. Now, before 16th century, as it has been speculated that this place was using for slavery throughout. No, that wasn't the case. Before 16th century, they were using all the rooms on the ground floor as warehouses or store rooms to keep the commodities I've made mention of ivory, spices, tobacco, spiritual liquor, and good. That's commodities from Africa here mm -hmm. and that from the Europe. Mm -hmm. They were keeping all of them in all the rooms on the ground floor. By early 16th century, 
Portuguese had a change of mind. They shifted attention from gold spices and other African commodities into something else. What was that? That was slavery. Exactly. You get it. That was when most atrocity against humanity started. Mm -hmm. When this started, the same rooms on the ground floor where they were using them as warehouses or store rooms, they converted them, they changed them into dungeons of cells where Africans were kept. And thousand people were kept at a time. 400 women there in the full moon dungeons and 600 men in all the rooms on the ground floor. So thousand people at a time. Mm -hmm. 1637, Dutch captured this very castle from the Portuguese through war. The locals helped them to capture the castle thinking that when they come here, they could be savior to them. After helping them to capture the castle from the Portuguese, they also came here and were in the slavery. Mm -hmm. And Dutch people stayed here from 1637 up to 1807, when slavery was officially abolished by the British. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't give you the impression that British never took part in the slavery. No, they did. They were staying at Cape Coast Castle. That was where they were going to slavery and trade up other commodities. But because of common sense and humanity, they came here together with the Dutch and abolished the slavery in the year 1807. Since that time, as I told you, Dutch were using this place for slavery. So after abolishment, they never realized the importance and the benefits of the castle. So they also decided to sell the castle to the British. In the year 1872, the deal was sealed between the Dutch and the British. This castle was sold by the Dutch to the British. British came here in 1872. They took possession of the castle. They used this place as sub administrative center where they were organizing all the political activities here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And later in the year 1948, they used the place as police training school, training soldiers for the Second World War, 1948. Mm -hmm. And they stayed here from 1872, as I've indicated, up to 1957, when Ghanaians, we had our independence. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, the way friend, Ghanaians are friendly. And as I told you initially, we kindly asked the British to move away from the castle. And since that time, Ghanaians, we have been using the place as attraction center here in Ghana, here in tropical Africa, and the whole world. So that's a brief history about the castle. Very interesting and history. Why don't we go ahead and take a look? OK. So shall we? Let's go. So we're in a smaller courtyard, and this is a place so where, Yes, what? this was the place where the 400 women, African women, were kept. All the rooms over here, 400 African women were kept there. I want us to go into one of the rooms, we see the place, mm -hmm. and also tell you the story over there in the room. Okay. We go from here. Let's do it. Okay, so here was the largest room among all the rooms on the ground floor for 400 African women. Hmm. Here about 150 women were kept and they were not allowed to go out because then they were having iron bars placed here vertically and horizontally at all the gates over here. Hmm. And some of the slaves also came from the neighboring countries, including Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Mali, Togo, Benin and the rest. And those days, only source of transportation was by foot. They were walking. So those who first sick and weak, just imagine, they left their feet to the wild animals at the thick forest. And those who survived and continued up to this place, they were not allowed to go out, as I've said. Mm -hmm. Because of this, the slave masters placed empty containers at the corners of the dungeon. And that was where the women over here were expected to go there and ease themselves into. But the same women were shackled together. They were chained together in a row about 15 or 5. So anytime one hand had to go to the corner there to ease herself. Mm -hmm. All other people on the same chain had to follow such a person to the corner there. This became very difficult. So only option for them was to start easing on themselves, vomit on themselves, urinate on themselves, and sleep in it as well. Mm -hmm. And they were women. As they were going through their normal menstrual period, they were doing everything on their body without washing down, neither even a piece of stick was given to them to clean their mm -hmm. teeth. And a lot of them died out of atrocious conditions over here. A lot of them died. Now, what was the age of the women? Were they young women, mostly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were from 15 mm -hmm. and above. Mm -hmm. 15 years and, and above. And they would take older if women, I, if, I, if I below 15 years, they would uh, combine two people and price as one commodity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. Yes. OK. So we have the flower over here. In memory of those people who died here, we asked them to rest in perfect peace. The flower was presented, or the wrath was presented by African 
diaspora. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are asking their ancestors to rest in perfect peace. Mm. Oh, shall we continue? Yeah. This is an underground reservoir. It was originally constructed by the Portuguese and it is covering the whole floor that we are standing, the inner courtyard over here. When this is full, it contains 20,000 gallons of water. The channel pipes with the various roofs of the castle. So anytime it's rained, it collected rainwater into this one. But it was first filtered there or sieved there before transferred to this one. So it was quite safe for them to drink and also use for other domestic purposes. Mm -hmm. But when Dutch came here, as I said in the introduction, they came through war. So when they finally captured the castle in 1637, they thought this one was poisoned by their enemies. So they went to the center of the castle, constructed three times bigger than this one. They preferred using the one they constructed themselves than this. Now when Portuguese, when Portuguese were coming here for the first time, they never brought their women because they were dying out of the tropical diseases, malaria, yellow fever. And these men who came here too, they couldn't stay without women. Mm -hmm. So anytime they wanted to satisfy their sexual desire, what they did was to bounce into the dungeons over here and pick some of the dirty African women, abuse them sexually. Mm -hmm. But the governor was also here. And because he was occupying the highest position, the man was given the privilege to stand up there. We call here governor's balcony. That was where he stood. He later had ordered the soldiers to open the doors of the cells for the women to assemble here. After the assembly, he looked through and made choice of women. Hmm. And there after the selection, a woman was escorted to pass through this very gate, go straight into the governor's bedroom for sex. Shall we look at the gate over there? Let's go. So as you can see, this was a staircase where the chosen woman for sex, they were going through this cells straight into the governor's bedroom. Mm -hmm. And some of them became pregnant. Out of that, we have the mixed colored group people now spread out almost all over the world. And some of the Dutch officials went to town, Elmina town, got married to the local women over there officially. They started lives. Children came up. They later brought their children here to go through formal education. So the whole tropical Africa, this was the first place where formal education really started. And they also preferred giving their own names to their children. And as at now I'm speaking to you, when you go to Elmina town, you may find the descendants of these people. You can hear Van der Poel here in the town, the Costa here, Williams, Mills, Johnson, Forson, Thompson, Hanson, Coomson, Branson, all these names yeah. are here. It was because of the marriage between the foreigners and the ro locals over here in the town. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very interesting. Shall we continue? Sir? That's it. Okay. The main reason that history has a that which motivated added the British, the Portuguese, or the Dutch to engage the Africans into the slavery was to carry them there into their new world to work on their plantations for them because they needed more neighbors. They also discovered that Africans over here were much stronger than the natives over there. So after they have brought their ships down there to the coast, as I told you there, a lot of women lost their precious life out of the atrocious condition over there. Those who didn't die, this was the exit for them to pass and go into a room called Room of No Return. And that was where they said final goodbye to Ghana and Africa in general. But these iron bars were later added by the British they came here, they were using the castle as this training school, so they were preventing their soldiers from accident. So, we shall quickly move to the room of no return, see the place, and also hear the story over there. We continue from this place to the room of no return. Okay. This was a transit dungeon where men were passing to go to the room of no return. Here, they were doing something called branding. The slave masters were trying to give an education to the slaves. So what they did was to put a stamp metal in a fire. They would rub the slave's forehead with oil or back with oil. And then after fix or attack this very heated metal there just to give you an education. A lot of them also died because it was very severe and painful. Those who survived this brutality, they continued their journey into the room of no return. But please, before we go there, take this question. The room is quite dark. You take a short step here, you bend down very low, you take about three steps before you raise up your head. Don't be scared, we shall surely return for room of no return. <laughs> this was the room of no return, and that was the door of no return. Anytime you pass through this very narrow gate, you say your final goodbye to Ghana and Africa in general. But the sea over there was very closer to the walls of the castle those days. 
So small boats were brought down there to carry the slaves from here to the model of the sea. That was where big ships were docked to pillage. Mm -hmm. Now, after sending the slaves from here to that place where the ships were docked, they packed them in the ship then after they took them away. But a lot of them prefer losing their lives over here than to go and die on the stranger's land. Because in the ships, in the ships, they had different stories over there. Some of them were packed like sardines on shops. Others were also packed like books on shops. Some were even tied together. They were laid at the top of their others. Brutality, punishment worse than previously in the dungeons or the cells also happened there in the ships. So lots of them preferred losing their lives here than to go and die on strangers' land. Here in the room of no return, being the last place for them, we have a lot of red of flowers over here in memory of those people who died. We ask them once again to rest in perfect peace. Let's take a look out the window. Ah. European yes. people were held, exactly. who were bad, but they were allowed out now and then to go out. And there was a nice breeze blowing through yes. there, but here it's uh, when you close that door, that's uh, no ventilation. Only no ventilation, ventilation yeah. was the whole over there. Yeah. So, what I really want to say is that the story may be very interesting or very sad, especially Africans. But what we say is that we don't tell the history to open all wounds of any particular group. Neither do we also tell the history to show the pains our ancestors or Africans enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But we just tell the history so that new generation, the young ones like us, they can learn something from the past. Simply because we can't undo the past, we can only do the future. So we normally suggest that we should let bygone be bygone. Either white or black, we come together as one people, then we forge ahead. You shouldn't forget about the past, but if you can, let's all forgive one another. Mm -hmm. Because together, we may be very strong, we build something better, but divided, before we become very weak. Mm -hmm. So, what they say? They say, let bygone be bygone. But what comes to say, just just guys. Well, thank you. Thank you for the tour. It's so very interesting. History, tragic history, but a story that uh, everybody should hear. That does it. So thanks for sharing that with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. welcome. We gotta head on our way. Okay. Thank you. Save Jenny. Otherwise. Till next time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that fort uh, sure was interesting and in many ways heartbreaking. Uh, anyway, we've uh, come a little bit uh, a ways now from there and uh, thought we'd uh, pause right here. We just uh, picked up a little local music for our video from a music store and I thought I'd uh, pause and give you a couple of fast facts about uh, the country of Ghana. First off, uh, behind me is a good example that uh, Ghana does have a growing economy. They've found oil, uh, I understand it in three different locations, and uh, 
I think they're looking for more as we speak. Uh, also, uh, they have a rich trade in cocoa and in various minerals that are mined in the country. The country itself has uh, 75 different ethnic groups. There's 49 different languages that are spoken in Ghana, and English is the country's official language. Everybody in school learns that. Now, there's also nine other official languages that children have the choice of learning. They have to learn English plus one other. Now, the news that is broadcast to all of its people is then disseminated in 10 different languages. That's 10. Nine plus English uh, for 10. I find that to be an amazing fact. Uh, we found uh, the people to be uh, really most friendly, uh, interested, kind. Uh, at times, uh, they became a little bit aggressive whenever uh, it came to spending money, but you know what? I can't hold that against them. Uh, I think around here, you call that survival. So you have to be a traveler and put up with that. Also, with taking of photos, uh, sometimes photos are, uh, people don't like us to take photos as much, and even sometimes uh, video, uh, they get a little uncomfortable with that. In fact, as we uh, went along the road, and this might be a travel tip for other tourists, we had our own driver, and uh, there were several different uh, security stops we had to pass through. Now, we were not shooting a video at the time. We weren't even taking pictures. But when we went through the security stop, they looked into our cab, they saw a camera, and they actually demanded to tell us what we were shooting, where we were shooting it. We had to get out of the car, go into the local office, where they had to view uh, what we had on the camera uh, to let us go. So you should let your driver tell you when you're going through one of these stops, before you get to those stops, well, number one, don't shoot any video as you get close to these or pictures, and then put your cameras away until you pass through. Uh, the currency of Ghana is, uh, well, originally before the British came here, uh, it was traded in uh, what are called cowrie shells. These were little white shells, as I understand it, and these served as currency uh, that they would trade back and forth. Now, since the British uh, rule came, they have a currency called the Cedia, and the Cedia is a currency that you'll need to get a hold of if you want to travel around the country, as they do not uh, take dollars or any other foreign currencies. You need uh, that local currency. You can do that either at the bank or uh, you can do that on the street in many locations, although uh, the government doesn't want you to trade on the street, but the reality is reality is uh, you can get a bit of a better rate. Anyway, uh, we had a great day out there and uh, we thought there was an awful lot to see, a lot more to see had we had the time. So we look forward someday to coming back to Ghana and seeing more that there is to see. Well, we have time for just uh, one uh, parting shot of St. George. And uh, again, this is the bay where the slave ships would anchor. The slaves would be loaded through that small door, down a ladder, and onto smaller boats that would row them out to the bigger slave boats, and then across the seas for their final journey. Can't even imagine uh, the feeling and the pain that uh, those people must have had to endure as they left their homeland and stepped away from it for the final time. Anyway, that's all we have for you today on Jamie's Journey. It's time for us to head back, but I hope you come travel with me again. Thank you. <laughs>